everyone and welcome back to a uh, what I'm going to call a story time, a Grim Reader story time, where I just explain a situation that occurred to me. Because, and so the reason I'm doing this, I want to share this with people to see if something similar has happened to you uh, and, and what you did in that situation. And it's a travel related experience. So, you know, I understand that not, not everyone has the the privilege to travel and um, so to be whining about problems that arise seems a little I don't know but I'm still going to be doing that somewhat uh, and I guess the title of it is traveling while mildly chronically ill or just in general the stresses of travel these days and I do think a lot of what I went through has to do with these days I know that for sure but it's still I think it still might be interesting to share so this is something that might happen to you and if it has happened, what did you do? So I flew home on Thursday, uh, June 23rd from Frankfurt to Toronto. And I do remember when I got to the airport in Frankfurt, the first line to check in with, with Air Canada was very long. And I discovered that for some reason, maybe because of just being prepared for it all, I didn't mind standing in line, and it was seemed to go, and it moved fairly quickly. But it was a very long line. Never, I've never been in such a long check-in line. You know this, but the thing is, I think what happened there is that there were people checking in for earlier flights, together with me checking in for a light, later flight, and so that's part of the issue there was the long line. So that went fine, and then I get to the gate through security. It all went fine. In Germany, you don't have to take your shoes off. Although with me, they did escort me to a little area to take my shoes off because I had my um, cushion, the, the one with the springs in them, because that's the only ones I can use for walking. That's right. But that was fine. I understand that. Then I get to the where the gate is, and that was um, fine. Just sitting there, I actually, you know, chatted with a nice young man who is from Sri Lanka and who's a filmmaker or a budding filmmaker. So it was kind of interesting, interesting chats. And there, but there, there was confusion as to the zones for getting on the plane. And both, that was a little confusing, but it ended up that my zone was, you know, the later zones, but it was also another very long line to just get on the plane. But that was actually okay too. I had a nice chat with a, little, a young woman who's going to be an au pair for a family who lives in the Northwest Territories. So she was off for a wonderful adventure. And she was very nervous and I tried to sort of calm her down. And the poor thing, I guess, hopefully she made it because <laughs> things were going to get bad. So the flight home to Toronto was uneventful and quite comfortable next to a nice German couple who um, I, I never know how people with long legs managed for so long. And this poor gentleman was in the middle seat with his long legs. So he was very um, good about not taking up too much space. I, I did try and give him the middle the armrest and so that was all fine went quite well the problem was the transition to the flight to Cincinnati which which had a fairly short layover and that's partly because they changed it and I didn't I decided to just wing it and see what would happen and and so I got in at about let me see here what was the time one something no Anyway, there was a layer, there was time of about a little over an hour. So, which under normal circumstances would be enough. But the problem, if you've ever flown internationally and then have a connecting flight to an, another place, is that usually the second flight is in a different terminal because it's more local. And this was the case here. So you're all frazzled. And let me, there was one other thing that kind of gave me false hope which I actually thought was very nice that Air Canada did this. They forced people to show their connecting boarding passes and they were the ones to leave the plane first. So that made me think, well, they know that we all have connecting flights and maybe they've contacted the other flights. Naive me, this is not what happens. Uh, I don't. I think in some circumstances they used to hold planes, but I don't think they do that now or, or I don't know. I don't know what the goings on behind the scenes are with, with flights. So you get off the flight, you go through, I'm trying to remember. So for in Toronto, we went through US Customs pre-check, which is basically US Customs at Toronto. They check that you're okay. And I remember having to, because I'm a green card holder with a, you know, I do the fingerprints and it was kind of hard because it's like you have to press it in a certain way and it took a while, but that all went fine. 
And then, I wonder if I made a mistake then, but I don't think I did. I just quickly went out and didn't worry about my luggage being transported somewhere else to find my new gate because time was ticking. I didn't have a lot of time. And this is where the problem began. I forced myself beyond my capabilities to walk quickly with my heavy backpack because I had a heavier one coming back than I had going to get more stuff in. And I ran, and I didn't, I can't run, but I, and, and also the other issue is the US gates at Toronto are in the F area, F car course, and it's very long, very long way away for, and there's no trains or anything. You're supposed to walk. They even have signs saying two to five minutes walk, seven minutes walk. And here I am with my heavy backpack and my rotten foot, which is okay, but it's still there. The pain in my foot that gets aggravated. And even in my good shoes, I was, and also it was kind of, I was kind of warm and overheating. So we're very uncomfortable. Run, 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 run. But, but with the hope of getting on my flight home. So here I am at the counter. It looks very empty. I go up to the man sitting there saying, I'm, I want to get on this flight. And he says, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We just closed the door. That whole thing of, we just closed it. And I'm thinking, but, but can't you just open it for one person? I'm here, you know, let me on. And then he starts looking around on his computer and he's like, oh, you're not even on this flight. I was like, but I have a boarding pass for it. Here's my boarding pass. I am on this flight. He said, no, 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 no. And then another lady came over. She was interesting because I think she's sort of a bit of a miracle worker, but in this case, she didn't work any miracles. She kind of was one of these persons that seemed to be good at solving problems. She looks over his shoulder and she says, oh, you've been rebooked on a, on a different flight. I said, well, why? I'm here. And and I think I think what they said was, well, they knew you wouldn't be able to make it in time and they knew the luggage wouldn't be able to make it in time. So they just rebooked you. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going on the later flight. When is the next, when am I going? It's, there's, I knew there was a flight at six o'clock. Uh, and and they said, oh, you're already booked for the same flight, this same flight tomorrow. Draw drop. Tomorrow? But I'm booked on this flight and you can't get me on the six o'clock one either? I get sort of... You lose your sonority so much so that you can't bump anyone on the later flight because that's full. But I paid for this flight. And I guess it's just because for some reason, if you're a connecting person you and you didn't change it, so you have enough time to get there, or if you just happen to be a bit late, then you lose the right to be on the next flight and they just find you an empty one. And that happened to be the two o'clock flight the next day. And I was very upset. I was very mentally and physically fatigued. My head was drenched in sweat because <laughs> of running. So I had a meltdown and I sat there crying for a while just because it was just awful, awful. I felt awful and I didn't know what to do. And even at that time, the miracle worker lady, who though did not for me a miracle work, she said something, don't worry, they'll accommodate you in a hotel, which also gives you false hope that they will help you with that. And and so in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, I'll, because I remember one time many years ago when in De I was stuck in Detroit getting home to Indianapolis, dear Indianapolis. I don't, ever, I don't know if it was from a conference or a job thing. And they gave me a voucher and I just won and I had a shuttle to my new hotel, which is a nice Marriott. And it was actually quite pleasant, even though it was shocking because that one had just, they just canceled it for some reason. It was a small flight to, I think, Indianapolis or even maybe a smaller plane like Lafayette. I don't know. So it had good memories, or at least somewhat comfortable memories, of me being able to book, stay in a nice hotel, because they bumped me, which they should do. But no, not in this case, not at all. We, you stand in line, you're all fr frustrated and frazzled. There were other people in the same boat to be told, all the hotels are booked, we can't really help you. You're better uh, finding a hotel on your own. I'm like, okay. I don't really know Toronto at all. I'm totally sort of not my best self. I'm at my worst self anyway. And I have to now find a hotel and pay for it and hope to be reimbursed. And as I said, this is where, this is where it probably would have been helpful to have someone with you to make better choices. Cause I didn't make good choices here. I fully admit that because I was so frustrated and, and sad and upset. And the first number I called was for an airport hotel, but I got through to some somewhat shady, something like bookings.com. And here's where things kind of got weird. 
she was she seemed nice and helpful and i for in the beginning i thought she was from the sheraton but they're, they're, of course not she's from some place booking hotels and so because the sheraton was booked she just said oh so how much do you want no 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 the sheraton was available but a, a room cost five hundred dollars for one night which was too steep for me so she said okay so how much do you want to spend and i had told her how much and she said okay let me see if i can find you something and she came up with a hotel that sounded legit. I don't know. And in retrospect, it was barely legit. <laughs> I mean, it was fine, but it was a stupid old hotel. It was really weird. And uh, she got out of me the book, the night fee for the hotel and then an extra fee for a shuttle that did not exist. There was no shuttle to this like, hotel and I paid her money on my credit card for this shuttle that was non-existent. So shady, very shady, my own mistake. Um, so I had to end up paying more for a taxi to this stupid hotel. Someone said, take, oh, just take an Uber. I don't even know how that all went down, how I found out that there was no shuttle that I paid her money for. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the taxi takes me to this place and it's just a very strange hotel. It had two types of rooms, renovated, but without a vanity mirror or unrenovated. Which one did I want? I went with the renovated. I'm like, oh gosh. And it just looked very shady. There was, there was construction and renovation happening while it was still open. There was a lady kind of arguing about her room rate over there. And the elevators were very strange. And then I asked about food. He said, well, you're probably better off doing DoorDash or something. I was like, okay, great. No room service here. So much for my idea of lounging by the pool and drinking a pina colada to get over my shock. Nothing like that. Instead, I was in this crummy room. The room was okay. I shouldn't say it was crummy. It was fine, except for it was just a strange place and the view was terrible. I'll insert a picture here, maybe. <laughs> and it was just very sad. And I ordered some stupid food on DoorDash or something. It was okay, but I had no utensils. They didn't even give me utensils. <laughs> And I didn't want to go out and ask for anything else. I just wanted to stay in my room. So, yeah, it's just a very sad situation that I had overpaid for. But I guess not because I needed a room. I just wish so. And, and so in hindsight, what I should have done, calm down before I do anything. And then go at least go to a place where I see the pictures a little bit more like booking.com myself. Don't just talk to some dubious lady somewhere. Because people would ask me, how did you book this room? And I said, it's, it was something called reservations.com. At least, I think booking would have been, through booking.com would have been better, or even Expedia. But in that moment, and doing it on your phone, when you don't expect you have to do it at all, was annoying, and I just bad, made a bad choice. And I survived, of course, it was fine. I slept okay. I was, you know, I didn't think I would sleep very well. Um, I just wanted to get out of there. I just didn't like the place at all. It just felt wrong. And so no breakfast. And so, you know, and I had left my suitcase. They, I, I think that the, originally I did have the option of getting my suitcase. And in hindsight, maybe I should have. I didn't really want to be bogged down with the heavy suitcase. And in a way it was good because in that hotel, I mean, I didn't really have much need for it. So anyway, I didn't get my suitcase. So I come back. So, and so, I mean, that's mainly the, the main part of the story, this uncomfortable night in an uncomfortable hotel that I had to pay for myself because I had been rebooked uh, without any prior knowledge. And so so getting to what they should have done or could have done, tell me straight away, you know, burst my bubble straight away about not so that I don't run somewhere else, run to try and get it. Because at least in that case, I would have been less frazzled. I still would have been upset and angry, but I think I would have had the forethought to find a better hotel, I think. Not sure. I wouldn't have been as up uh, as physically def uh, depleted. And so one thing I did in the hotel is I tried to arrange for wheelchair access to this terrible long walk to the gate for the next day because my foot was hurting. And I thought, fess up that you have this issue. It's okay to be uh, someone in a wheelchair. Get to the airport the next day. Total chaos again, very early. I left very early, even though my flight wasn't until two because I didn't want to hang around that hotel. What am I going to do? I had to check out at 11 anyway. So I was at the airport at about, I think it was before eight. 
And what they had done, which was very strange, is people who had later flights were in this kind of holding area, so they wouldn't clog up the people going through security for the, they were sort of staggering people going into the whole, uh, to the actual area to check in. And I, and I went into this hostage, no, sorry, <laughs> holding area. Sorry, it wasn't that bad. Uh, and then I asked the guy, well, but see, I I want uh, wheelchair access. How do I, who do I talk to about that for my later flight? And then he pointed me to, pointed me to this area where you ask, for, where you sit and went for your wheelchair service. And I talked to them and I said, oh yeah, yeah, you're in the system. And that, now the, the, how I had gotten wheelchair access is I'd had tweeted about this. I was tweeting to Air Canada and about Air Canada, about what they had done. And they did reach out and said, go, you have been put in the file for a wheelchair. Go talk to the people you have a wheelchair. You have the right to a wheelchair. I said, thank you. Good. Go there first very early. And then they realized, oh, you're not until two o'clock. You can go away and come back. And of course, I still am mobile. So I was able to go away. So I went away and hung out in the airport from eight until about 12 something or not quite well around 12. Had Starbucks, was tired, felt okay, fine, whatever, not happy, but I'm reading my book a little bit. Go back to the wheelchair area. And that was very confusing. And finally, someone came with a wheelchair. She puts me in it. Doesn't really talk much to me. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I was just trying to be nice and friendly. And she wheels. All I hear her doing on the walkie-talkie is talking to the security person saying, what wheelchair coming? Are you ready? And then he was ready. And then I put my stuff with her help out of my bag onto into the bins. And then I have to get up to walk through the little thing where they screen you. And then there's pre-check again. Oh, and uh, yeah, pre-check because the day before when I had to go to my hotel, I was all awful feeling. It took us actually forever to get out of the area because we were in an area where you weren't really able to go back easily. I actually, in the end, had to, after walking around for quite a long time, talk to a customer service person who actually went and had to open the door for me to get out. Get out and have to go through Canadian customs. So I had to go into Canada because I had to stay over in this crappy hotel, which I all didn't want to do. And I all had to do it because they had Canada. So yeah, and so then the next day, I had to go through a US pre-check again because I'd gone into Canada. And at least that guy, he kind of said, oh, first I have to unconfirm you. And then he talked to someone on the phone and like, no, 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 no. She can just go through. She went through it yesterday. It's all, you know, fine. So I didn't have to do the, that didn't take very long. And then I was sort of at a loss because I went through and there was no wheelchair and no lady. Nothing. Nothing. There were a couple of uh, people sitting there, uh, Air Canada people. So I said, asked, well, I'm supposed to have a wheelchair. Where is it? And they're like, no, nothing's here. You can go down, take a lift down, and you'll have a cart. You could get on the cart. So the wheelie cart that you see people on sometimes, which, to be honest, has been on my bucket list to be able to ride on a cart. So I did get to check that off. But the whole wheelchair had just crumbled. I had no wheelchair. So the cart wheels me to a certain point, and then I had to walk all the way on my own anyway. So it didn't work at all. And I did uh, DM Air Canada about it, and they seemed a little bit upset about that. And they're like file you know tell us who it was or because there's supposed to be a relay system where they sign you off to someone waiting for you on the other side now she had not they said did the lady tell you about the relay system i said no not at all nothing she didn't talk to me she just talked to someone on the walkie talkie and since i'd never done wheelchair before i don't know that there's a i should have been more adamant with her like well how do i get a new wheelchair when i'm on the other side she just kind of left me I mean, whatever. And I did sort of feel like they judge you, like she saw that I could kind of walk and she's like, yeah, she's fine. Who cares about her? Let's leave her be. But that's probably me projecting. I don't know what they think. Nothing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and so, yeah, I get to where I have to sit down on my own, no wheelchair, even though I had been promised a wheelchair, my foot's okay. I mean, it's fine, whatever. And then the flight was a little bit delayed and I was like, oh God. Please, please don't let, it, let me get home. And finally, it did all work and I got home, except I don't have my suitcase yet. It's nine o'clock on Saturday. This was a suitcase that apparently, you know, was supposed to come on me on Thursday and it's still not here on nine o'clock. Apparently, I don't know, I'll check online that it's here, then it will arrive. I'm, I have hopes that it will. But yeah, that's my uh, 20 minute story time of how hard it was for me to get home. 
And I think a lot of it is just because of their, they're having a lot of issues. The air, airlines and airports are having a lot of issues. I, this is almost a warning for people. A lot of shit is happening in terms of just getting to where you need to go. So anything involving a connection, if you have to connect, put in plenty of time, put in three hours. Um, unless you're really quick, uh, anything can happen. And then be prepared for anything and everything to happen. And also, if there is anyone who has better advice on how do you find a good hotel or a decent hotel in a city that you have no, really, no real connections to, you know, in a strange place. I mean, at least it's a place. It's not that strange as Toronto, I know. But I don't know. And I'm all frazzled and tired. I know. I mean, I almost thought I should have called Bill and have him cook, book me a hotel. Would it be better for someone, someone else to just go online and book you one? Can they do that? So, yeah, that's my little story time. So I feel like to have a look. And I do have some fun things planned. I have a little I have a little bit of a stash of a stationary thing. Not much, but stuff, stuff that has come in while I was away. And other than that, lots of reading is happening or did happen on the plane. I'm having a lot of thoughts about The Magician by Tobin. A lot of thoughts. And also, of course, about the whole man family. They are a fascinating family. We have to give them that. Absolutely fascinating and unique. And Katya, the wife, is so interesting. And her family is really interesting. Anyway, but I'm not, this is not a video about that. I'll talk to you all soon. I hope this was interesting to some of you. And I'd love to hear your story, your horror stories of traveling uh, and how you dealt with it mentally and physically. Um, as I always say, in hindsight, the big mistake I did was to run for that flight that I wasn't, I had never been on. I had already been rebooked. Could someone have told me that sooner? And not giving me the impression that they were waiting, which I don't think they ever really wait. And I really think they close the door because then they can say it's an uh, on-time departure. And they don't care about... And they kind of calculate, oh, there's only three people coming who want to go to Cincinnati. We'll just bump them. And you have no recourse. You don't get money. They gave me two vouchers for $10. So, you know, it's two Starbucks. <laughs> That's all it was. That's all I got from Canada. Nothing. No help. No nothing. Anyway, I'll stop complaining. It's very first world complaints here. I fully understand that. But I still think it's interesting and I would like to hear your thoughts on travel mishaps. Talk to you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.